good afternoon welcome to cec live lectures i am dr pavitra bharatwaj and i work in an eminent college of the university of delhi in the department of computer science welcome to today's lecture today we'll be discussing a very interesting and important topic related to computer science that is data processing so often we hear uh, the normal terms like data data processing information knowledge and these this jargon somehow appears to a common layman as as being very similar to each other so uh, today's lecture i i plan so that you know some of these concepts can be made very clear we see what is the role of data and data processing in the modern business world in the modern commercial world in the modern data processing and transaction processing systems so in today's lecture we will be introducing all the major differences between the common terms that we are using like data information knowledge and how these are processed and also we'll be talking about the data life cycle which is commonly uh, interpreted or which is commonly used in case of commercial uh, data processing setups which we commonly called as the cdp commercial data processing management systems or commercial data processing systems so to begin with we'll uh, first see exactly what is data what do you call as data so basically what is data data is any collection of facts which is used for reference or analysis this is a series of observations measurements facts and these are basically the very important characteristic of data is that data is unorganized so it it is absolutely unorganized and it is in a form which does not give any meaning to the reader or to the uh, person who is looking at the data so basically this unorganized facts raw facts which we also call these can be organized to produce useful information so uh, now data could be in any form we understand that computer data can be in any form it can be a textual data it can be numeric it can be alpha numeric or it can even be some other kinds of data like the boolean data or some kind of uh, audio data or video data so data can have any form but basically data is unorganized it is raw but it can be it can be processed it can be organized to give a meaning to give some context to the data so basically the data sets like we we are seeing here that these are the data sets that we are seeing so you see yes no yes no is there some numbers are written so these are making no sense but if some context is given to this data and this data can be processed into a useful usable form then this data can be of use and this data is then known as information basically so uh, basically what is data and information information is the meaningful form of data so when you interpret the data when you organize the data and when you uh, when you give some context or some meaning to the data then that data is known as information so data basically is interpreted it's processed and that meaningful form of data that contextual form of data is termed as information so data per se has no meaning but when it is processed then it can be Uh, converted into information because it has got certain meaning with it so basically in this if you see in this example what you are seeing here is raw data like yes no yes no you cannot understand what is it about but if i say that this these are the responses to the survey about the preferences of consumer so these then it makes some context then it may it may give some context to the user that okay so these are responses so the responses have been given in yes and no so still very the meaning is not very clear but yet it has provided some context to the data similarly if if you process this contextual information what you get is the information so when you when you have a context 
of the data and you process that data you give it a meaning then it is called as the information. Now again if you look at these numbers, these numbers are again raw facts which are meaningless, unorganized which, which do not give any kind of particular significant meaning to the user. But if we say that these are the marks obtained by a student and further if we process this then if for example you calculate the percentage that percentage can be termed as an information because that information is meaningful that information will give you some idea about the student or the academic performance of the student etc. So, basically raw facts they when they are provided some context they are provided some meaning then they are transformed into information. Now, again this is another example of data. So, this makes no sense, but if we say that these are the readings of the electric meter of a person the beginning and the ending of the month reading. So, then this makes a give this gives a context to it and if you find out if you find out the difference between these two if you calculate then you can also generate the information regarding the consumption of say electricity by the person. So, basically what we are trying to convey here is that information is equal to data plus some meaning and the context. So, when you add some context to the data and you make it meaningful by processing it that data then that is known as information. So, providing context and meaning to the data is known as processing of the data. So, basically processing the data means that you are giving some context to the your data as well as you are providing you are making some calculations you are making some changes to the data. So, that it, it has some relevance it has some meaning the the user can can draw an inference from it and hence it is known as information. So, raw facts or figures are data and which is processed to give a meaning is known as information. Now, uh, basically we have seen that in computers data can be stored basically computers are considered to be data processing devices. So, which is a device which is used for uh, accepting the data, storing it, processing it and giving out the results. So, obviously now the role of the computer has changed to a lot uh, to a great extent, but basic role of the computer was that of the data processor. So, now if we see that when you store data into the computer, the data is stored in a hierarchical matter. That is, uh, this, this is the structure in which data items are stored and we can also see the different uh, levels of data storage. So, the first or the topmost level that you see here is the level 0 which is bit. So, bit here basically means a binary digit, so which can be 0 or a 1. So, a single unit of data storage is the bit either a 0 or a 1. If you combine a few bits say 8 bits then you get a character. So, a character is a combination of uh, 8 or 16 bits and uh, this forms a character. Now, if you combine the characters you form a you, you get a field that is like for example, if you combine a few characters then you can get the English characters then you can get the name of the person. So, name of the person is the field and the alphabets in the name are the characters and the bits that form each alphabet are the level 0 or the bit level data storage hierarchy. Now, if you combine several fields together what you get is a record. So, like for example, if you combine name, occupation, address, uh, field, department all these things then it will become the record of an employee. If we are talking about the employee then all these fields put together are called as the record of the employee. And when multiple records are put, multiple logically related records are put in one place that is known as a file. So, basically a file is nothing but a collection of logically interrelated records. And then of course, we have the highest level that is the level 5 where we see that the data is not stored in files rather it is stored in databases. So, databases store the data in a form which is much advanced and which is much better than the way data is stored and organized into 
files. So basically data storage hierarchy is referring to the way in which data can be stored from the smallest unit of data storage to the largest system of data storage. So when we talk about database, so we say a database is actually a logical collection of interrelated records and these records are then uh, stored in one place called the database and there is a software which manages the database which is known as the database management system. This is an application software which will help in managing the database. So this is known as a database management system. So if we say, if we talk about organization of data, so we have just seen that the data can be organized in two ways. One approach is the file oriented approach where basically data is stored in the form of files and the other approach that we see here is the database oriented approach that is how you can store the data in the form of databases. So first let us talk about the file oriented approach. So basically a file oriented approach you can see multiple files are created within the system like for example you have a master file, you have a backup file, you have an employee file. So different files are created within the system and in case of databases different models of databases are there and each model has its pros and cons of regarding the organization and structure of the data which is stored in that particular database. So basically first thing that we need to see is what are files. So a file is a logical storage unit defined by the operating system providing the user a mechanism to store information on a physical storage device such as disk, tape, CD, etc. So basically it is a logical entity which provides a mechanism of not just storing the data in the form of uh, uh, in the, on the physical device or on the physical storage material, but it also provides a logical structure for accessing that data through that particular interface through that particular uh, hardware device. So application programs they are used for this purpose. Uh, so we have number of different application programs which are which are written in uh, high level uh, programming languages which help the user to access and process the data in the file. So basically we have application programs for creation of files, for addition of files, deletion, updation and manipulation of the file data. So for each of these functions uh, we have a cre uh, uh, we have a specific uh, uh, program which will perform these functions of the file. Now when we talk about files it is important to understand that how the records are physically organized on the file system itself on the memory. So for convenience and of storage and retrieval of uh, data records there are multiple file organizations which are used. There are basically three types of file organizations which are used and file organization actually tells you how the data has been organized and how the data can be accessed. So in file organization we see that there are three main types of files. One is the sequential files, the second are the direct access files and the third category of file are the index sequential files. So these are the three important file organization structures which are commonly used in which data is organized on the file. So they define not just the way data is stored but also the way data is going to be accessed from that particular file which is organized as a sequential file or as a direct access file or as an indexed sequential file. So let us see each of these individually. Now in sequential access file method the all the bytes or records they are read in order from the beginning. So basically data in a sequential file sequential file is always arranged in some particular order whether it is ascending order or it is descending order and whatever the order is data will be accessed only in that particular order. So basically you simply truncate the if you are trying to write anything in between then it will truncate the previous records and it is also seen that when you are 
uh, for example, you are on the first record and you want to access the tenth record. So, in case of sequential access file, you cannot skip the record that is directly from the first record of the file, you cannot go to the tenth record of the file. You have to necessarily traverse through all the records lying from second to the ninth record. So, basically these are used in tapes wherever we have tapes. So, we have the tape recorder, we have the magnetic tape and we have the video tape also. So, in these all these type of systems all these types of devices we know that in order to go from one record to the other you either need to forward or you need to rewind, but you cannot just simply jump from one record to the other because all the records in the sequential access method they are accessed sequentially that is they are accessed in a specific order. Now, next type of file organization is the random or we also called it as direct access method. Now, in direct access method the best example would be that of a CD. Now, in case of a CD if you are playing track 1 and you want to access track 3. So, directly you can select track 3 which will start playing. There is no concept of rewinding or forwarding in the case of a CD. So, therefore, we say that in random access method the bytes or records can be read in any order. So, there is no specific order and the access time for all records is going to be the same irrespective of the position of the record the access time is going to be the same. So, basically in this case also writing can replace existing bytes or records. It is append to the end of file and it cannot insert data between the existing bytes. So, there is a specific order only in which in random file also you can insert a record only at the end of the file not, um, not in the middle of the file. So, it seeks operation moves current file pointer and the, so we have different operations like for example, the seek operation. So, when, when the file is seeking the data it means it is looking for a specific type of data. So, basically when you open the file uh, you uh, you open the file. So, you rec you seek or you look for a particular record and when you reach that record that record is traversed. Now, next uh, the typical of most modern information systems are information storage systems are the database systems and all these devices like the CDs, the DVDs, uh, the MP3s they are all randomly accessible multimedia devices. So, one must always remember that tapes are sequential access devices whereas, CDs, DVDs are all random access devices. So, basically data is sought in these files in no particular order that is in random order. The next type of file, the third type of file that we see is also a popular way of organizing data in a file. Here you use two files. One file is called as the data file which contains the records and the second file is known as the index file. So, the index file is the key and disk of disk address of each record is stored on the index file. So, for each record there is a corresponding key which is used to identify that record and there is the place on the disk where the record has been saved. So, access items in file based on the contents of an item in the file. So, basically in this case what happens is, so if there are two files which we are making the data file and the index file. So, whenever any record is sought, so it is first sought in the case of index uh, in the index file and when in the index file it is found at the specific disk address, the disk address is noted and then you find that record in the data file in the proper data file. So, there is a small index file attached to every data file. It is just similar to the index of the book. If you have a book of 300 pages, the index is of only 2 pages, but whenever you want to look for any topic in the book, you first look at the index file. The index file or the index of the book, it will tell you the page number on which that particular record will be found. Similarly, here also the index file will tell that where a record is found depending on the disk address of each record which has been 
stored. So, these uh, index files they handles uh, the data separately by the modern database system. So, all modern systems today they are all using sequential access files because basically they are using the best of the two techniques. The, uh, the access to the index is basically through a sequential manner, but when the record is found it is found in a direct access manner. So, once the address has been found from the index then the file pointer take directly goes on to the record which is uh, basically in a part of the data file. So, we can see here this is the file systems where we see that each department is managing its own uh, set of files and we see that the files are not connected to each other. So, basically this means that the files they are on they are like isolated islands of information which have no exchange or which have no dialogue between these two. So, this is the file system. So, therefore, we say that uh, the file system has a uh, few weaknesses also and therefore, this is the reason why the file system became obsolete and it started uh, maturing into other systems like the database management system. So, basically what we are looking at are islands of data in case of scattered file system. So, the problems which occur due to the file systems are very very difficult to detect and solve. The first problem is that of duplicacy or redundancy. So, redundancy or duplicacy means that the same data item or the same record is stored in multiple files. So, because of redundancy there it leads to redundancy or duplicacy it leads to inconsistency amongst the records. So, inconsistency means that the same data may be stored in different names in different format. So, one thing is that the data is same but the name and format is different. The other thing to note here is that the values of the data stored at multiple places do not match that is in one file the value of a particular data item is something in the other file the value is something else. So, this kind of mismatch between the values of the data item is also because of the file system. This redundancy is a major weakness of the file system and because of the redundancy what you see is inconsistency. The third thing is rigidity that is it requires a lot of complex uh, uh, programming to implement any changes that is you cannot do ad hoc queries in case of file because the structure of the file and that of the application program they are closely tied up together. We have uh, we have discussed the concept of data dependency and data independency. So, here what you uh, see is data dependency. So, in this case the file and the program are closely related to each other. So, you what if you change one then you have to change the other. So, if, when we are talking about the dependency between the program and the file structure it, it also creates a very rigid system for storage of data. So, therefore, because of this kind of rigidity it becomes very difficult to make any changes in the file structure or in the structure of the program which is accessing the file system. So, therefore, there is a large kind of dependency between the data. So, because of all these problems in the file structure there are a number of implications that we see. First implication because of duplicacy and because of multiple storage uh, multiple times the same data is stored in the places there is wastage of space and because of the inconsistent values which come due to redundant values we have the data inaccuracies and then we have high overhead of data manipulation and maintenance because if any changes are to be made in the structure of the file then you we need to have a, a real large number of changes which happen as a cascading effect on all other files. So, if you are making changes to one file you may have to make changes to a large number of files. So, because of all these implications the file uh, system or the file management system uh, is, is a little questioned when we talk about data management and data storage practices. So, we can see here that the same data item is stored at multiple places 
and uh, we see that uh, you know the inconsistent field names are there, the sizes are different, data values are different and leading to data duplicacy. So, because of this, because you are the because the there are islands of information as we say, files create islands of information. So, there is no communication between the two files which are stored in two different locations or which are stored in two different offices. So, therefore, in order to address these issues which are coming due to the file system, the next modern more modern approach of file management is the database system management. Now, in case of the database system management, what we see is that there is a centralized database and all the departments or all the entities within the organization will access the data from that single central data repository which is known as the database and there is an application program interface which is there between the users and their database which is known as the database management system. So, basically the database management system will act as an intermediary and it will help the giving a logical view of the data which is present on the database. So, depending on who is looking at the uh, database or who, who which is the user who is wanting a specific record from the database, the database management system will control uh, and it will see that all uh, access rights are enforced and the correct view of the data is given to each user. So, we can see here that there are different uh, in case of file systems when we see, we see that there are different files for employee, for customer, for sales, inventory, for accounts. But when we see in case of a database management system, the all the data is stored in one single location and everybody is accessing all departments are accessing through a common interface which is provided by the database management system. So, when we talk about database management systems, databases have also uh, evolved over time and there are different models which are discussed commonly when we talk about how data can be organized in case of the databases. So, we see that the first model that we see in databases is the hierarchical model. Then we talk about the other models like the networking model or the relational model, but the first and the foremost model which was proposed as a way of organizing data efficiently and effectively other than the file system was the hierarchical database. So, in case of hierarchical database, basically there is a parent child relationship among the data and its predecessors. So, basically it was designed to develop uh, and manage large amounts of data for complex manufacturing processes. So, basically now it has the one of the very important examples uh, of hierarchical databases is the information management system. So, we see that hierarchical hierarchically associated data clustering they, they these databases they use pointers. So, uh, basically they uh, assume all the relationship they are in a hierarchy that is parent child relationship can be seen here. So, that is each record will have only one corresponding parent record, but each record can have on the other hand the record can have n number of children records. So, basically it is logically represented in the form of a upside down tree that is an inverted tree which has a single root on the top and then you have multiple leaves at the bottom as you go down. So, one parent can have n number of children. So, there are one is to many relationship can easily be uh, shown in case of hierarchical database model. So, this is this is what looks like a hierarchical database model where you have the top level and then you have the bottom levels and each record can have multiple child records or multiple related records. When we say child records, basically we are talking about the related records. So, hierarchical database is it proposes many uh, advantages also like for example, it is very simple to understand and it groups the data according to the relationship between the objects or the relationship between the entities in the database. So, it is it gives a holistic view of all the entities for which data is stored. Another important thing that 
the advantage of the database it provides is that there is centralization of the data. So, we have seen that unlike the file structure here, we will see that there is reduced redundancy and there is more consistency among the data items in case of hierarchical databases. But at the same time this these models the hierarchical model it proposes some disadvantages also like for example, in case of many to many relationships the hierarchical model may not be suitable because it is not it does not allow to show many to many relationships in case of hierarchical model. Then this the representation is complex when you talk when you want to add more fields to your data or when you want to add more record or as long as the size as when the size of the database becomes bigger then this kind of a hierarchical network model may become too complex to implement. Also another problem which was there with the file system still exists here that is of structural dependency that is data access will require physical storage path. So, basically there is physical data dependency that is how the data is physically stored on the medium is also going to determine how the data can be accessed from the system. Also because this system is it did not become much popular, so it had lack of standards, it, be, it was less popular and it because of this it is limited it has limited portability also that is shifting the system from uh, shifting that kind of database from a given configuration of um, uh, computers to another configuration may not be an easy job. So, therefore, this kind of a structure the hierarchical model of the database did not gain much importance it did not gain much popularity and hence further new models were used for making for setting up commercial databases for use in the uh, practical world. So, the next model after the failure or after the hierarchical model is the network model or the network database. So, basically it is there to uh, meet the shortcomings or the limitations of the hierarchical model. So, basically it represents more complex data relationship like we said many to many relationship. It is also used to perform to improve the performance overall performance of the database that is you can run ad hoc queries, there is no physical dependency and this is more standardized therefore, it can be used it can be a more portable kind of system. So, network database model is one step ahead of hierarchical model when we are talking about standardization of the product and when we are talking about the performance of the product or we are talking about how complex data items and relationships among the entities can be represented like a many to many relationship can be represented in this kind of a database. So, we see that this is also similar in a way it is similar to the hierarchical model, but here what is happening is that you have records which are linked to each other through pointers. So, basically there is it is composed of sets and each set has a parent record which is also called as the owner record and a member or a child record. So, basically we can have a many to many relationship here because each owner can have multiple members and a member can have multiple owners. So, here we have a many to many relationship whereas, in case of hierarchical parent child model we had only one way one to many relationship. But here you can have because you are using it in the form of a pointer. So, you can have one pointer from one record to multiple record and from those multiple records to this particular record. So, therefore, in network model the many to many relationship are successfully implemented. So, you can see here the relationship the, the database structure which was shown in the hierarchical model in the form of an inverted tree is actually shown here representing in the form of a pointers and each node or each owner record has multiple member record and each member record then corresponds to multiple owner record. So, like for example, here you can see that invoice member record is corresponding to two owner records that is customer and sales representative and sales representative is corresponding to uh, again to uh, invoice. So, therefore, this is a many to many kind of structure. 
Now, this is um, this is advantageous in a way because it shows the data in the form of connected nodes to each other. So, this is more flexible because adding and deletion of records in this kind of a structure is simpler. You only have to change the pointers. So, more data relationship types are available in this because we have seen that many to many relationships are also supported by the case of the network databases. And also unlike the hierarchical model, there are much this has much standardization and a database administration and portability. Both the aspects they are much more uh, professionally managed in case of network databases as compared to the hierarchical databases. But of course, there is a few disadvantages. The first is the system complexity because it requires a familiarity with the internal structure of the data access. How data is accessed internally is also required to access the records from a network model. And again, this also does not provide that kind of structural independence. So, of course, hierarchical database, it has physical dependency and network databases, they have structural dependency. That is, if you want to make changes into the file structure or if you want to make changes into the data structure, then significant changes are required at the level of the program at the level of the application program. So, this is a major problem with K, with the uh, network database model. Uh, now, in order to meet or in order to fight with the limitations of the hierarchical and the network database model with the which are also known as the legacy database system, uh, what we required was a model which was easy to implement which had a large capacity and which which provided the flexibility which was required uh, by the database designers and also which was free of physical or structural dependency. So, in order to meet all these objectives of simplicity, uh, data depend independence, structural independence and also the, uh, the ease of use. Another model was proposed by EF Cord, and that model is known as the relational database model. So, now in relational database model, which is also known as EF, EF Cord's relational database model. So, basically, here what we are doing is that there are two views of the data which are separated from each other. The first view of data is the physical view of data or the physical representation of data which is actually the computer's view of data or how the data is viewed in the system. And the human view of the data or the logical view of the data is what the user is going to see. So, basically what uh, EF Cord's relational model proposes is to separate or to segregate these two views of data. That is how data is physically stored is absolutely independent of how the user is going to view it. And it is also important to understand that the user need not even have a knowledge about how data has been physically stored. So, this kind of abstraction has been provided by the relational model proposed by the EF cord. So, today if we see relational database model is one of the most popular models. There are a large number of professional databases which are based using this kind of the model that is the relational model. Now, in this case of course, the pointers which were used in the network database they have been eliminated and neither are neither is there a parent child relationship among the uh, records like we saw in case of the hierarchical. But we are seeing that in relational database the data is organized in the form of two dimensional tables. So, what is a table basically? A table is a two dimensional grid like structure in which data is stored in the form of rows and columns. So, this is a very logical structure of data representation and wherever there is a row and column intersection the data item is stored there. So, in this case what we see that it provides a large amount of flexibility for adding of new records for making changes into the logical structure of the database. So, what you can see here is an example of the relational 
model or what you can see here is are different tables which you see how data has been organized in case of the tables. And uh, we what we are seeing is the human view or the view of the logical view of the data and there is also another view in according to which the data has been stored physically on the storage medium. So, that view of data is known as the physical view of data. So, basically the relational database it gives many many advantages and that is why this database model has become so popular. So, the first important advantage uh, and also something which could not be met by the earlier legacy database models of hierarchical and networking systems was that it provides structural independence. That is the there is a separation between the database design and the physical data storage access and there is also logical independence that is there is dif there is no connection between how the application program has to be changed in case the database is going to change. So, this this kind of data independence is offered by relational databases. So, there is structural independence and there is logical independence which relational databases offer. Then of course, we have an ad hoc query language or we have the support of the structured query language. The ad hoc query language is called the structured query language which translates the user's queries into codes. So, SQL is actually an engine which it is a query engine which helps the user to ask for the requisite data from the database and it returns the records to the user in the form again the records are also returned in the form of tables only. Now, this there is of course, some disadvantage because these systems are more complex therefore, they there is a substantial hardware and software overhead cost which is required because you need to have extra hardware for this because the, the systems they are designed to store enormous amounts of data for which uh, high end sophisticated softwares are required and then there is the cost of the software also. If the system is designed poorly and if the implementation has not been done carefully, then also this system may lead to more problems than the uh, solutions which it was designed to uh, provide. Then it is its ease of use allows careless use of the RDBMS. So, because it is so easy therefore, people tend to misuse the features of the relational database management systems and hence the advantages which were sought they actually transform into disadvantages. So, therefore, there is a lot of wastage of storage space which may happen, overhead costs may increase and therefore, the effect efficiency of data storage may change. So, therefore, the latest model which was developed is the object oriented database model. Now, in object oriented database model, it is basically a semantic model of data. Now, in this case, both the data and the relationship, they are structured or they are organized in the form of a single object. So, when it is organized in the form of a simple object, then we store the data as well as the functions or the uh, or the methods which are accessing that data on the same but on the same frame. So, basically there is modularity which is facilitated because of reuse and construction of complex structures. So, because these objects they become complex structures which are holding both the data type as well as the functions. So, the latest model <coughs> that we are using is the object oriented database model. In this case, we see that it is showing the advantages of the ER model, but adds on more features to it. So, here we had discussed about the entity relationship model in the ER model and here in addition to the entity relationship, we are adding more attributes. So, attributes are the properties which describe the object and then we have introduced some methods into the object itself. So, methods are relevant operations that can be performed on an object. So, this is a self-contained unit of data which has been designed and this 
is an abstraction of the real world entity. So, when we are saying abstraction means that we are hiding how the uh, how the values of the attributes of that particular object can be modified with the use of those inbuilt methods. So, then in object oriented uh, databases we have a concept of classes. So, what we do is that all the similar objects which share some attributes and methods they can be clubbed they can be grouped together to form a particular class. So, a class is nothing but a group of objects which have same ob, uh, attributes that is the same properties and same methods. So, therefore, once you define the constraints or once you define the features, once you define the attributes for a class, then you also define the attributes, the methods for all the constituent objects of that class. So, this incorporates the notion of inheritance also that is attributes and methods of a class they can further be inherited by the descendant classes. So, if you have an object called the employee from this object you have in this object you have the attributes like employee code, employee name and you have some methods. Now, from this object class employee you can create further classes like manager or you can create another class like teacher because some of the attributes or all of the attributes of the employee class can be inherited by the new class which has been created and some objects, some attributes or some methods can be added specifically to the descendant class which has been created from this parent class. So, therefore, object oriented databases they offer a much larger view of advantages because we are saying that this is the way the data is pictured in the real world. So, this is the most abstract way in which data and the functions can be stored in case of databases. So, there is semantic representation of data that is fuller or more meaningful description of data is possible via the object. It is closest to the real world view of the data. Then it provides a lot of importance to modularity, reusability and inheritance. That is objects which have similar characteristics, similar attributes and methods. You do not have to create them again. You can simply use the objects which were and the code which was designed earlier and you can add some more features to it depending on the uh, descendant object from that inherited relationship. Then there is also an important aspect of data abstraction and data hiding which is possible. So, this, these object oriented databases they are able to handle very complex data uh, structures, very sophisticated information requirements can be provided and also transactions which are slow transactions can be handled by the object oriented databases. Now, if we talk about disadvantages, so first and foremost the disadvantage is that this system lacks standards. So, there is no particular standard data access method which this system has specified. Again, this can be complex navigational data access method for uh, because it creates a class hierarchy and the uh, traversal of the class hierarchy has to be understood before the changes can be made. Then the learning curve, it, it can be difficult to design and implement this kind of a data structure for uh, a beginner because considerable expertise is required to model the real world objects into objects of the database to convert the real entity, real world entities into their logical counterparts. So, for that an abstract kind of understanding of the system is required. So, for th that is also attained after significant experience. So, it is much more system oriented than user oriented. So, sometimes the user of the system may not find the system very easy to use because it is optimizing the use of the space, it is optimizing the use of the system per se, but it may not be the right way in which the user would like to perceive the information. Like we saw in relational database management system which organize the data in the form of tables. So, that is a more user centered way of 
showing the data because tables are much easily and they are more logical and they come more naturally to the person who is looking at the database. So, here and also because of this there is a high system overload. So, object oriented database systems they create a large amount of a large amount of overhead on the system in terms of processing in terms of storage space because those complex classes have to be stored. So, therefore, uh, object oriented data databases may not be a viable very viable solution for databases which are using uh, a smaller kind of uh, uh, data simpler and smaller kind of data structures and may not be even uh, very beneficial for the programmers or the database designers who are in the beginning of their uh, database designing tasks. So, in this lecture we have discussed about how data is organized in the form of files and how it is organized in the form of various models and various methods of databases. In the next lecture we will be talking about data processing and commercial data processing in particular till then thank you.